Hello, YouTube. History tells us that we are at a pivotal moment on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ because there might be more pain ahead. Here we're looking to a 2008 pattern which shows a head and shoulders pattern, but more specifically, a candle close below the 50 monthly moving average or the short term price. That has not happened ever since we put in the uh, 2008 low, recaptured it, and then we just expanded nonstop. And this is really, really important because, as we know, chips lead tech and tech leads spy. There are two stocks we're going to specifically look at a little bit later. That is going to be Tesla and Apple because those are the mega weights. And we are noticing that there might be some demand issues. And where Apple goes, so does the market. And both of those have now printed a new monthly lower low and an annual lower low. That is like really, really important. So as we're getting started, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor, please, and thank you. If you could smash that thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Thank you ahead of time. All right. So as we're talking about what is happening today, we're looking at QQQ, and we know we have this period going back to 2008. Now let's actually drill into the more uh, recent period here and see exactly what's happening because we got a high here at 270.15, which is about three points off testing our 50 monthly at 273.14. We are starting off with an inside bar, and we also note that we have a micro higher low holding. So if the NASDAQ is going to fall, well, we already have the bearish pattern, and volume here is kind of flashing a big warning. If you're bearish, you're like, yay, let's go lower. If you're bullish, you have to really pay attention to these areas. So first thing I want to pay attention to is that it's only the first day of the month, but um, if we hang around this 50 monthly for much longer, this doesn't look really constructive. I noted here on my Twitter post, if you want to follow me, it's in the description. Um, this is the first candle closed below the 50 monthly since 2008. Is this a weird coincidence or will we repeat history? We talked a lot about this on the weekend deep dive as well. So I encourage you to watch that if you want to find out more. So second thing here is just that we're holding the monthly lower low. And this is going to be really important as we now shift gears here and have a look at Apple and Tesla because... These ones here are actually not holding their low. Uh, we printed a new lower low and we're actually below it. Last month's low, 108.24. Current close, 108.1. .1. It's pretty close, but it did not hold. And same thing here for Apple. We look at last month's low, 125.87. Our close, 125.07. So it's not really looking all that great. We look here at a 12-month chart. It doesn't look much better. If you remember from our stream on Friday, we were talking about how we're closing right near the low of the candle, which generally means we have pressure building up to the downside. We now also have uh, 2020 as resistance. We got our 2020, 2022 low as resistance. And now we're really watching the 2021 low. Those are the most important areas for Apple. When we look here at Tesla, um, well, we're below everything. So what we got now is like 25 bucks, 30 bucks. That's like not all that constructive. If we put it on a, on a log chart, and look at the one month. This is where it's doing something it has not done since, it's I, since it IPO'd in about 2011. It's not really holding the range or the first drop. So is this the first drop here? And we need to modify the yellow box to include a larger portion? I'm not sure. But because these stocks are really going to be um, a huge sentiment gauge for us going forward, we have to pay attention to them. And if we look to our seasonality chart, this is like usually not what happens. So uh, let me see if I can pull that up here. Uh, stock market seasonality chart. I know I had it up. I just don't have it handy right now. Um, so if we look here, the reason why this matters is because we tried to start off the year, the year strong. We tried to rally up, which means we tried to do what we normally do every year in the last 20 years on average, where we go up into the first part of the year, Santa rally into the end of the year, rally up for the first two days, hold it for roughly 10, and then come back down. I also noted uh, on our private stream this morning that it seemed unusual that we were gapping up because, well, we we're gapping up 1%. And normally the high for all of January is about halfway between 0 and 2% or what? 1%. So if normally all we're able to hold on a monthly perspective is one month, and then we dip down to roughly 1% red, well, we kind of already hit the top and bottom range of both. We went up by 1%. We went down by 1%. And we're closing down by roughly, I don't know, like 0.4% on the S&P. And the NASDAQ's down a little bit more. Currently here at uh, 0.68 red. So that's like really important. We're, we're doing what we don't normally do until the beginning of the year. And as we look to these two charts, notably Tesla and Apple, we have some news. And then we have a reaction to the news. So what's the news? Well, Tesla, Tesla kicks off New Year in China by extending incentive offers. I talked a lot about this in our private group. 
Links in the description if you, if you want to find out more about that. And now would be a great time to ask you one more time, please. And thank you to smash that thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And uh, if you want to join us again, links in the description. You can find out all everything I mentioned. And uh, we have people who really love to, try to trade Tesla. So come join us if you want. The reason why this matters is because um, Tesla has now also promoted their um, head of China to be the number two person in the company. So what that means is that Elon is still currently over at Twitter. And this number two guy is from China, which means the most important person is going to be heading up Tesla after Elon or pretty much the acting CEO is from China where they're what? They're reducing prices just like they did in the US. This, this tells me that Elon wants to grab market share. He wants to maximize market share, not ma maximize earnings. That kind of like really matters for a company like Tesla that has grown at an annual uh, compounded annual growth rate of 50%. But remember, there's the news versus the reaction to the news. And this stock has had its worst uh, worst month, worst year, worst week ever in history. And we're off to a bloody start. It's down by 12% more. So that's it for Tesla. That's the news. And the reaction to the news is pretty sour. We got a pretty big move down here. So it's a pretty sour reaction. If we now shift gears, sort of looking at Apple, Apple City is back at 90% capacity after, right, the C word turmoil subsides. So Foxconn is now... Uh, back up with about 200,000 employees there. But um, that's the good news. The bad news came out of the Nikkei today from Apple suppliers that told us that, here we go. In a sign of the gloomy outlook for consumer electronics, Apple has notified several, several suppliers to build fewer components for AirPods, the Apple Watch, and MacBooks for the first quarter, citing weakening demand, according to Nikkei's Asia supply chain checks with several component suppliers. Apple has alerted us to lower orders for almost all product lines actually since the quarter ending December, partly because the demand is not strong. There we go. So the supply chain in China is still trying to cope with the latest uh, abrupt policy changes, blah, 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 brought on by the C word. So what does that mean? Well, we talked about the NASDAQ being like really important. And when we look here, well, like this chart is like really ominous. Is it, is it, is it a weird coincidence? Is it going to turn into more? Please make sure to drop me a comment and tell you what, tell me what you think. I would really, really appreciate that. All right. So we talked a lot about tech and that's really what the story is for today. And the reason why we really want to focus on Apple is because it's now starting to repeat the same pattern we're noticing on Tesla. We talked about this before. It's basically a head and shoulders pattern. And thank you to KREF for resharing that in our group today. I appreciate it. So because we are now at a new low of the month, a new low of the year, the saying is that where Apple goes, the market usually goes. And if it's going to be going into a new low and hold it, that is not good. That is not what we want to see as bulls. So we're already devi deviating from the seasonality chart, but what are people actually buying? Let's have a look here and see, because there's some things people are actually buying that might surprise you. So, oops, let me go here to the next board. And we'll, we'll come back and look at QQQ in a moment. I just want to highlight what, what stuck out to me. The dollar. Dollar's up by 1.13%. Whoa! Higher high, holding last month's high, last week's high, sorry, in a bullish uptrend over, over support. This looks bullish. And we talked about this area right here on the white line on the weekend when we, draw, when we drew the lines together. Uh, if we're able to get above roughly 105, well, we start to invalidate our first head and shoulders. And we're looking for upside momentum all the way up to roughly 109. Really big level there. So the dollar is like uh, getting bit up here. It's like really notable. Second thing which really stuck out to me was gold because gold right now is up by 1%. That is particularly weird because we have the dollar up. We also got gold up. It's over its 50 weekly. And this is generally a safe haven. What does it tell you? People don't want that stinky tech right now. Usually the leaders of the bull market will be the laggards during the bear market. And uh, gold's actually holding up like really well here. If we look at a 12 month chart, what is it telling us? Well, uh, we eked out, um, last year we closed, sorry, did we actually close green? You guys like those full candles? Let's go to hollow marginal red year, right? Down by like 1%. Whoa. Okay. And now it's green. Yes. Gold. I love gold. So really important pattern because we have a massive cup with a handle and we're looking for that upshot. I'm looking back to this previous pattern as well for the bull cycle to continue, meaning a super cycle. So the fact that people are bidding up gold and the dollar is really notable to me. What else were they bidding up? Well, um, looking across here, not all that much. Google, Amazon a little bit, Meta. Okay. And then every ETF is red. 
FXI was the notable gainer after that. That's China. So people are getting pretty bullish on China. Uh, they're reopening. They want to get back to business. They're doing some fiscal stimulus. So there you go. That's the story here. We're now going to look at two more charts. Then we're going to leave the rest for us to review on the video tomorrow. And by the way, I want to give you a huge thank you to um, you guys for getting us 1 million views on YouTube for this new channel. I really, really appreciate it. So what do we have here on SPY? On SPY, we have a higher high and a higher low. Okay, well, generally that's bullish. Yes, we're hovering right around the key area, 380.54. That's really important. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky because we actually have a bearish engulfing daily candle, but um, also a failed breakdown. So what does that mean? Well, we're chopping up in the zone. Remember before we talked about accumulation? If that's still the case, well, we can't afford to stall out here. We have to start moving higher. Otherwise, we're in a bear market, we're below averages, and we're in a massive downtrend. That is not bullish. We're not going to be able to rally without picking up some momentum. So I'm really paying attention to what we can do here. Uh, we're back above last, uh, last, last week's low, but is it good enough? Well, not really, not yet. Um, we got to build up pressure to get over 390 in that 50 DMA. Let's see if we can do it. Looking here to QQQ, pretty much the same thing. Daily bearish engulfing candle, but we, but we recaptured last week's low. I'm also noticing a pattern just like on SPY here that's forming on the daily chart. It's an inverse head and shoulders. So there is there are a couple of glimmers of hope, but if Apple and these large mega caps are going to start dragging us, we have to, have to, have to be mindful of that. We're now set for our fourth weekly close below the 200 weekly. How are we going to get into an uptrend if that doesn't happen? And if these averages keep doing what they do, they're going to turn into a golden cross sometime into March. That's like really important for us to pay attention to. So with that said, there is one last thing I want to point out because we finally launched this new tool and I find it particularly interesting because when we look to our dark pool flow, just for the day, we're looking at uh, just for today, we note that Apple and Microsoft and Amazon, oh, uh, this is actually updated since uh, since I hit the close. So Apple has $4 billion in dark pool flow. But what I'm more interested in is actually the SPY. And I want to, sh I want to show you the reason why. If you look here at SPY, let's just type it in, type the search. There we go. Hit it, hit levels. All right, we got a level here. Uh, it's 382.46 with 8% of the daily volume or $2.31 billion traded or 6 million shares. Why does that matter? Well, let's look here too. Where we closed out yesterday, or we closed out, sorry, last week, we closed out at 382.46. So what does that mean? It means that right here, three cents green or on the gap fill from the gap up, meaning the 2020 close, 2022 close, and the 2023 open, people have traded $2.3 billion worth of stock. That should, keyword there being should, act as either a push for bull or a push for bear because a lot of people are either dumping short or selling or accumulating a long position. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in.